we're, we're getting toward the end of the sessions now, but the, but the paper topics are getting more interesting in some ways. And so we would like to uh, begin today with uh, Tuna Snyder, who will, I assume, introduce his co-author uh, in terms of the programs for environment in Serbia. Tuna? My name is Alfred Snyder, and I'm the Edwin W. Lawrence Professor of Forensics at the University of Vermont. And I don't mind telling you that I'm the Edwin W. Lawrence Professor of Forensics because there's a great story that goes with that. Edwin W. Lawrence started the debating program at my university in 1899. Uh, and then when he graduated in 1901, he went on to have a fabulous career of, of success and fame in banking, railroad, law. He won cases in front of the United States Supreme Court. He had a fabulous career. And he attributed the fact that he was successful, rich, and happy to the skills he learned in debating. OK, successful and rich, maybe. I don't know about the happy part. I think it takes more than debate to make you happy. Uh, and so he decided to take a lot of his wealth and give it to the university with the assumption that they would take the interest from that money to make sure that every year there was a, a debating program for students. And he also created, with another pile of money, a professorship. And the budget has to be spent by the Edwin W. Lawrence professor. Now, I never met Mr. Lawrence, but I cannot speak to the public ever without remembering the way he changed my life and made everything I do possible. Part of my professorship is that I'm supposed to advance debating in places where it isn't. Now, I don't think he had Iraq or Cameroon or Chile or Qatar in mind, but I did, and so, and I'm carrying it forward. I'm here today to, on behalf of two of my co-authors, Natasha Petrovic uh, and Marko Cirovic from the Faculty of Organizational Sciences uh, at the University of Belgrade in Serbia. Uh, and it was their idea to have a program for Serbian university students about the environment. And they asked me to help to work with them and plan it and so I did, and we did this program last summer. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that it has my name and not theirs. That's because they thought that a foreign professor would attract more students. But I think the reason that the students were attracted was because there's a strong sense of awareness about environmental problems uh, in Serbia. Certainly, there are many ecological problems in the world, uh, and I don't need to go through them for you, I think. Uh, but s young people in Serbia are uh, very aware of this. They can see around them the effects of pollution. There are problems with water. There's a problem with air pollution. Much of their energy is produced by very dirty coal, uh, and their weather seems to be coming extremely erratic uh, and changing. I noticed just before the conference that there was snow in Istanbul and floods uh, in Lebanon. So, uh, you know, there is something going on in the ecology. The idea is, was that we have these skills that we teach through debate about how to learn to communicate to audiences, how to form arguments that would appeal to them, how to analyze complex issues, and then we offer these to students. And in many cases, these go to students who are interested in debate. Being interested in debate in future vocational uses of this through the law or education or business. So this is the audience that we normally reach. And their idea was, Let's reach out to people who are motivated by a specific issue. Uh, and then we can try to impart these skills to them. Well, I'm going to jump ahead to the conclusion, because I've decided 
that I think this is a fabulous way to reach new audiences with the critical pedagogy that's represented by debate uh, and advocacy. That we can reach a lot of students instead of having to train students to become interested in activism, we identify activist people and causes and teach them debating. So on behalf of, of both my, my, my co-authors who could not attend because the University of Belgrade wasn't necessarily able to buy them a plane ticket, uh, and it's a fairly low income country, uh, and they tried, but I want to give them all the credit, and if there are any problems, I'll take all the blame. I want to describe our, our program. First, they publicized the program and said, if you're concerned about environmental issues, I prefer to say ecology myself, but uh, environmental issues, and, and I'm not sure what the word is in Serbian, uh, uh, and to advertise to students who were interested in ecological issues, will you come to this one week intensive training workshop about learning to advocate on behalf of the environment. Uh, and many more students uh, applied for the program than we could take. So they tried to have students write an essay about why they wanted to attend, uh, and then they picked those students that seemed uh, most activist, and we decided on about 40 students that we would have in our program for the first time. Because this is a first time program. We're gonna do it again, it's gonna be bigger, the university and the government are more in favor of it, so we think we're gonna get more support. Maybe even the US Embassy will support it. Maybe. Uh, and so we, we, we got a, a, a group of students who were interested. Now, they were all students who lived in Belgrade, which is a fairly large city, so that made their costs low. They didn't have to get a hotel room or anything. And we would go from fairly early in the morning by Serbian standards, uh, about 9 a.m. till about 6 p.m. with a short break for uh, lunch. And we started on Monday and we finished uh, on Friday uh, evening. And I just want to talk to you about the different elements of the program to illustrate how we tried to combine issues of argumentation, public speaking, and debate with issues of ecological awareness. Now, one of the reasons they asked me to be involved was not just because I have been doing debate training in Serbia since 1996, when it wasn't Serbia, it was Yugoslavia. Uh, and so I had you know, seen the, 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 the Serbian debate program, the Yugoslav debate program grew up, grow up but they also was aware that I'm acutely interested in ecological issues and training debaters to debate about ecological issues uh, in a more skilled uh, and able way. So, uh, and we, we used in many ways the model that we've used that, that Boyana Skirt and I have used around the world for our debate academies. And they combine uh, a limited element of lectures active workshops, getting students to actively do things, give speeches, make presentations, design pro projects, um, elective classes where you can offer a number of different courses and then the students will select from them, uh, and then actually having them engage in advocacy about environmental issues. Uh, so a, a lot of our instruction was about ecology. And uh, many young people who are interested in, in a ecological issues are like, environment, good. Nature, good. Industrial pollution, bad. Which is a, a very simplistic way of viewing it. So I began it with a survey of environmental philosophies, ecological philosophies that exist. And they exist along a continuum. And they go from... The ecology doesn't matter. Whatever humans need, they can do it, right? The heck with the ecosystem, let's make money, let's have fun. All the way to on the other end of the continuum, which is humans are a virus that threatens planet Earth 
and we would be better off if human beings went away. Now, I think you can realize that the, the, the good positions exist in between those two, but there, there are positions like uh, loose anthropocentrism. Anthropocentrism means being human-centered, only humans count. So loose anthropocentrism says that the ecology is there for humans to use, but we don't want to destroy it because humans need it. So don't destroy it. And there are many other things in between, like a, a, a propertarian notion, which is a very sort of capitalistic notion that if everything was private property, we would take care of it because we always take care of our property. It goes back to the, the Garrett Hardin famous essay called uh, the, the, the Tragedy of the Commons about how we always ruin. And it makes sense. Where does most of our pollution go? Into the air, which no one owns, into the water, which people don't own, and into the ocean, where people don't own. And in a lot of our approaches to environmental control, for example, carbon emission trading permits, which is one of the ways that's envisioned to try to control global warming, where everyone can emit so much carbon. And if you emit more carbon than that, you have to buy someone else's rights. And then, so you trade them back and forth. Uh, then there's also sort of a consumerist ecology, which buy green products and live a more eco-friendly lifestyle and uh, on to a more profound, like deep ecology, which says that human beings are destroying the ecosystem and we need to change the ways in which we live in very profound ways to stop being focused on consuming so many products. Uh, and then on down to the final one, which the students always find funny, which is uh, we need to get rid of human beings in order to save, save the ecosystem. So I want them to understand that there are a variety of different approaches and the theorists behind them. We also had small workshops with them about how does your daily life affect the ecology? What about the choices you make to have a car, to take the bus, to buying new products to, you know, how simple are you willing to live in order to uh, protect the, the ecology, to workshops to try to make it real for them so that they can understand how they play uh, a role in this. Uh, we started offering elective classes on the first day uh, about energy use, about alternative energy, about uh, different ecological lifestyles, uh, ecological living spaces that don't uh, infringe so much on the ecosystem. Uh, and then we asked them to give very short speeches about how they felt about an ecological issue. There we were just looking to say, how do they communicate? On the second day, we introduced them to the modern theories of persuasion. How do you use communication to change people's minds and get them to do what you want. Because yeah, you need to, I mean, this is how people sell products that nobody needs. So we can use the same kind of methods to promote lifestyles and social practices that promote our, our common uh, living space. Then we did some exercises asking them to take these theories, to apply them to specific issues, you need to persuade so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so about this and that, what strategies uh, would you use? We offered more elective classes in the afternoon about animal rights, about uh, climate change, about what makes, uh, one of my favorite is, what makes people happy? And I'll just mention shortly this discussion that we ask people, I do this a lot with students around the world, What really makes you happy. And they always say family, friends, meaningful work, hobbies, learning, right? Dancing, singing, celebrating, all these things make people happy. And then I ask them, what does society say you need to be happy? Cars, property, 
new products, the latest fashions. And then we always point out, look, the things that really make you happy don't cost money. <laughs> They're things you do together that you could do over and over again. You don't have to pay anyone to sing and dance. But the things that society is trying to convince you you need to be happy don't really make you happy and do cost you money. Which leads to one of the other areas of instruction we had, and that was about the nature of work, right? Work for money. And I introduced a fairly radical concept that work is often part-time slavery. If, you're, if you don't enjoy what you're doing and it's not useful in a community sense and you're just doing it to get the money and things that you spend money on don't make you happy, hmm, there's a problem there. We had more students give speeches uh, and we had them form case study teams where they formed teams to, do, to des design environmental activism projects. On our third day, uh, we worked with the case study teams, talked about their strategies in the morning, had them and faculty members help them design their activism projects. Uh, then in the afternoon, we had more electives about zero growth, about influencing policymakers, raising money, uh, making people care uh, about the, the environment, uh, and, and things like this, and then we had some more time for people to work in the case studies. On Thursday, we brought in a number of our, of our colleagues from Serbian Academia. They presented uh, lectures and question periods about fundraising, ecological accounting, environmental networking, international standards, using the internet and social media for activism, uh, and those were all conducted in Serbian because they all spoke Serbian and I didn't. And so then I stayed home that day because I didn't want to sit. We didn't have simultaneous translation. The last day, we had more work sessions with our case study teams. They presented their case studies to a group of judges. The judges then evaluated them and rank ordered them in what we thought would be most effective to least effective. Uh, then we had a debate that was staged about an ecological issue, which was a large public debate. We invited a lot of people. Uh, and uh, then we announced the winners, the, the, the case study groups that we thought had done the best job. And they were very ingenious. We have since, and then the program was over. We have since identified a number of ways in which it could be improved. It should be longer. They should actually try to implement these case study, these strategies and studies. We'd like to give them more practice talking and, and trying to persuade. So uh, this is the program that we did. And we're also going to add more faculty and have a lot of fun. And I didn't design the poster, but I thought it was a nice one. So I think this is a, we, I think we could do this with human rights. We could do this with immigration reform. Uh, we could do this with peace studies. There, there was a lot of things we can do by taking the kind of critical pedagogy that we use through debate and, and other forms of activism and communication and try to apply it to specific areas. So that's the deal, and I had a great time. Thank you. Don't be afraid, I'll be nice. And I might learn something. Our instructions on the first uh, day when they said you're chairing a panel and no one had a question to start with, you should have one? Okay. I understand the recruitment, that's good. You went out and found people who'd actually be interested enough to do it and then you armed them with technique. Why would that rationale not also apply to the people who are anti-environmentalist? Uh, it, it probably would, uh, and <clears throat> it's just that people who are, who are not in favor of protecting the ecology are probably too, mi too busy trying to make money by destroying it. So uh, it might know, make, I, I think well, they gain personally 
personal profit from doing such things? So you should go recruit a group there at uh, in Serbia at the at the university that is from the business school. Maybe I I absolutely agree, and and this is one thing that's very important in pedagogical issues. We have powerful tools we're sharing with our students, and they might use it to feed the war machine. <laughs> and I just hope that at some point during their, their critical deliberation, they'll listen to their hearts and their minds and, and decide that, that, that they maybe don't need to do that. I have a question. I, well, I, I assume that human beings are good people. This is a, 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 an assumption of mine. Yeah, I have a question for you. Is cost prohibitive? And the reason I ask this is because there are students out there who are activists who don't have the funding to attend something like this, especially if it's international. So is there some sort of cost uh, sharing, some sort of cost deferment? This, this had no cost. It was free. All the faculty were volunteering. The university provided the space. I bought my own plane ticket, which would why it would be nice if the US Embassy would buy my plane ticket. But you know, I believe so much in what I'm doing that I actually spend my own money. You don't think anybody bought my plane ticket to Cameroon, right? No, I had to do that, but I'm, or Iraq. I'm glad to do that. So I absolutely agree. We need to keep costs down to a minimum to, 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 to bring them in. People might pay to learn how to use these techniques to make profit by destroying the environment, but I'm not interested in helping them so much. work the tech? <laughs> is, is anyone else? I don't want to step with anyone. The sense that a group becomes self-reflexive because debate teaches you the other side, you actually may become self-critical, which is what argument you spoke with the business people might actually catch a clue then, is the same thing true here. How do you keep this kind of advocacy, which is good, non-political? Well, it's or, not. I, I mean, I don't, I don't pretend that there, I mean, if humans are involved, politics is there at, at some level. There are politics of the family and politics of the, of the buffet. And I, I, I think if we're trying to do things non-political with no politics, then we should go stand by ourselves in Antarctica. But as long as there's more than one person involved, it will be. And like I say, I just trust that human beings are good and they want the good, and they want the best. I'm very much a, a follower recently of African-based rhetoric that I have learned about. And the notion is that, in, in their notion, human beings are here to bring good into the world. And the special gift that they have to bring good into the world is communication. And then the power of communication is what's called NOMO which is the generative power of the word. When you talk about things, they start becoming real. And this is what I hope about, about what we do, that we'll talk about peace and maybe there'll be more peace, that we'll talk about understanding and maybe there will be more understanding. And unlike our panelist, Jasim, who I spoke to last night, he seems to be pretty much a pessimist. I'm an optimist and it's a good thing I am because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Tuna just said that advocacy and communication and human nature will save the world. How can I step on that, I think? Thank you very much. <laughs> you. The next in our program is Linda, who came all the way from Malaysia, and she's going to be talking about visual uh, rhetoric uh, in some form, or design, actually, you said, right? Photography and, and design, right? Thank you. Okay, assalamualaikum to and a good day to my fellow friends. Okay, my name is Rosalinda. Okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a PhD student registered in my uh, local university in Malaysia, but uh, what I'm presenting now is uh, what I've done in my master's dissertation, okay? It's about learning photography in visual research communication, okay, which I did with uh, Madam Elena, my colleague, okay? So the abstract is, this, study, uh, this is uh, to investigate how design understanding 
In visual communication helps students in producing better photographs in their assignment. Okay? The learning practice in design element and the usage of digital photography has helped improve students' ability in seeing, learning, and critical thinking in constructing their aesthetic value images. Observation method used in this study indicates those students are able to compose and enhance their visual perception and improve visual communication throughout the learning process in various stages for preparing the major department, which is uh, when they go into higher uh, uh, department, okay? Learning visuals such as photography need critical thinking and ability to argue and defend ideas and concept to challenge visual impact in their works and project. Okay, keywords. So the background is uh, to investigate how design understanding in Faculty of Creative Multimedia, okay? The purpose is to show how learning practice in digital photography and live drawing can achieve design principle understanding. The visual research communication outcome is to enable students to conceptualize and rationalize creative ideas through the understanding of element and design. Okay? This is intended to improve the Im image making of students from science background taking photography classes. Okay? The issue is Photography being prone to technological invention has become most universal means of communication in expressing aesthetic value that represent unique expressive uh, capabilities in all art forms, okay? According to Upton, after the war museum and art school opened their doors to photography and a trend that is continued until present. Photographers has begun to break free from the oppressive strictures of the straight aesthetic and documentary modes of expression. Okay, toward the ends of the 20th, uh, 20th century, digital imaging processing and computer-based technique have made it existence possible to manipulate images in many ways, creating revolutionary advancement in photography, okay? Most digital cameras nowadays allow us to make our own decision regarding our memory, the cost, and allow users to increase the memories to the digital cameras as they feel as they need, okay? Choosing the right camera involves a number of decisions, including computed platform, image quality, onboard image capability, capacity, and exposure versatility, feature set, and included software. So the, uh, the objective is to integrate the thinking and practical skill of using digital photography to execute a better understanding toward becoming an active and creative learner. The question will, for this research study is, will the student prior not knowledge gained from visual research communication affect their ability to take a well-composed photo photograph. How design principle influence the student ability to produce better composition in their photograph? That is, that if any correlation between design principle understanding and designing a good composition photograph. How infinite is the effect that take place to what extent of the immediate response to in learning and teaching through observation during class and feedback from students and other tutors that involved in the class. Okay, the limitation for these studies, okay, it only applicable to design photography process subject in alpha student of multimedia university, which are uh, only for multimedia university in Cyberjaya. Okay, under the subject of visual research communication is in trimester system. These are the uncontrollable variables of student. We select students from better level for observation based on their projects and output in their assignment. During each intake, 80 students in each group will only be, there, there would be only two tutors assigned. Therefore, the tutors work in a team, we call it team teaching, 
to provide one of one to one consultation during tutorials, practicals, uh, practical and understanding of the camera and skill component. But most university level students in Malaysia are able to understand better due to their own maturity and inquisitive mind to learn individually or with peers. Other minor limitation to this research is the vast changes in the technology. Therefore, the students are given, are given freedom to use any digital camera model based on their financial income. Therefore, this research will look into only the ability affected by the use of digital photography, digital photography as an improved tool. Gender differences are not being addressed by the researcher in this study and are assumed that both gender population are equal and, and have the same perception. Okay. So these are the operational definition. Okay. Okay, literature review were done in uh, uh, the topic of importance of visual world. Okay, this about uh, according to Perimuto, the word and images organize in information in different ways, such as word contain meanings such as letter, word, sentences, paragraph, written language that read in strictly predictable, regular, and linear fashion, and direction whereas images are often defined by graduation, analogical, and discrete unit digitally. The principal comparison in visual image has been addressed in detail by well-known Gestalt psychologists marks that creates juxtaposition or ex associating different objects within and between frames. Okay, Visual literacy, uh, literacy has a multitude or definition for the concept and the associate skill has arisen from each and every theoretical and applied perspective, origi originating from the foundation of the field and the same time shaping and defining its eccentric nature and scope. According to Avenue, uh, and identified, she has identified L, uh, 11 visual literacy competency illustrated by the table below. We have visual vocabulary, visual compensation, visual thinking, visualization, which a process in which image is formed, visual reasoning. So these are the things that we inform to other students. Okay, these are most of the uh, literature that I've done regarding this. The another uh, topic is the importance of photography in visual literacy. Okay. According to J. Ruby, in his paper, Seeing Through Pictures, the anthology of photography, he discussed the relationship between the social science and photography approach in the perspective of ethnography of visual communication that refer to photography as one of the six visual domain other than film, television, art and craft, the built environment and performance that culturally conditioned visual communication. Okay. Stigley indicate that photography transformation in the visual art is changing photography and visual communication with the new technology resolve in the new tools, form, function, and potential in constructing both, both visual and conceptual. Okay, the role of visual images has been widely discussed that photography contribution in ethnography of visual communication could supplement and provide another perspective in the visual culture and the society. Okay, these are all the literature review, digital photography and teaching and learning Okay, according to Jeffrey Moonen, the result in the new practice and techno techniques created by digital application in photography faces new ideas and technology in education, contributed to the art and design education. Stated that the technology surrounding visual design has changed dras drastically in the last 15 years, where technology is tra transforming visual communication by giving giving ways to digital cameras and other software packages. 
Okay. So these are the. I think I should get. Yeah. So the basic element, which are lines, spot, direction, scale, light, color, texture, and so forth, are identified as visual element that form dynamic of visual design and visual construct. Most of the execution of work are using photography as a tool by nature to show that the exercise element of design and employ the selective seeing, emphasizing and ordering principle embedded in the process of sight and predominant structure. So by completing this research, it will fulfill the viewpoint of digital photography in the world of visual literacy there will be room for further findings and usage of digital photography in teaching and learning design fundamental in the faculty of multimedia. So the next literature review is about, uh, alpha level design education in the faculty of this multi creative multimedia. We, during the study, selected topics were identified as quite similar to the terms used in photography, directions of lights, shapes, tone, value, understanding texture, understanding co uh, color, understanding composition through rule of third, motion, and photo sequence. Uh, the, uh, remember the picture selected by Tuna when he shows about the environment, pictures of a frog on a lotus leaf. We, what we teach our student is to look uh, analytically at the pictures by the direction, look at the color and the texture, the way they uh, compose the image so that it is uh, considered as aesthetic value. Okay, other terms that are related to extension to a true explanation and visual example would be appropriate in guiding the students. The delivery content of texture application of digital photography was used extensively during lectures and help students to understand the module effectively. Usual, visual in the form of digital photography has taken and shown you during lecture as a mode of supporting the explanation. Similarly, similarity between the two subjects are best explained in table 41. Okay, we have terms that we use in the visual research and terms in digital photography. We share the introduction of uh, element and principle design through lines that show dynamic tension and directions. Uh, we show the what difference in line expression and eye level quality. Okay. Okay, these are all samples. Okay, of the students' work. Okay. Research design. Okay, the research design used to, for this study would be based on the observation re and reflection on our own practice. Questionnaire will also be distributed to each participating students to identify their perception in the use of digital photography. For the practitioner and fellow educator, interviews will also be done in order to identify the usage of digital photography in their delivery of the subject in designs that involve the teaching and a learning process. Interviews and questionnaires are done in order to get opinion and feedback that would confirm the application of design fundamental elements that are being applied. Okay, observation on student output in means of projects <coughs> and assignment will also be recorded in still, uh, still images to be evaluated as their understanding in the use of digital photography. Observation will follow with reflection that constitute into three cycles of evaluation through triangulation among educators to validate the process in improving the result of the next cycle. It's a cycle, we call it action research. Okay. The first cycle is observation on student capabilities, design syllabus, tools and technology use, output art, work and project given. The second cycle is on the reflection, evaluation, triangulation and identify weakness. And then the third cycle, we are pre-planning for the improvement, impl implementation action and validation. 
sample and participant are the local students who are from secondary and primary uh, secondary school that has attended alpha level and taken the subject of VRC. They are they will also uh, instru instrument, uh, instrumentation, observation and procedure data collection. The main instrument, uh, instrumentation would be obs observation and questionnaire. And then we develop the criteria of the observation. And observation will also be recorded on still image. Okay, these are the observation done. Yeah, these are throughout the class. We have uh, technical learning where students, when they start learning photography, it concentrate more on the technical, where they need to handle, know how to handle the camera, the technical side. And then we develop the image when we, they start taking design lessons. We have rule of the texture, line, okay, techniques. Okay. These are the marks we also be given to students' ability to show their understanding of design element and principle. Okay, there will also be two examiners or tutor making marking each student upward to confirm the standard of evaluation and validity. Okay. <laughs> Most of the lectures show the agreement toward the design understanding that being showed. The work review was done every year, end of the semester for all submission. Okay. Technical skill in controlling the effect and handling the camera will also be judged in the marking procedure. They have to develop the concept, study the lightning and the design of the whole by pre-visualize on their mind to get better composition. Okay, mark, uh, okay, conclusion and future works. Okay. In identifying the student perception and positive usage in their understanding to execute their design in better level, there is application by the students applying the element in their composed photograph. Based on the observation of the data collected and the visual <coughs> did affect the student ability to improve the understanding of composition. The usage of better picture would be the use in the upper level of the final year to produce more creative work and ideas to enrich the industry and profession. Okay. The students are able to integrate their knowledge to a better enhancement of the creating of creating better design. Most of the work produced by the student through their projects given I evaluated shows that the enhance did occur. Students are able to understand and apply the element of design in order to compose their images and apply creative approach in their, uh, in their assignment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Your point is well well taken that with that with digital technology we can do so much more with images mm -hmm. just as we require spoken competence and writing competence should we consider demanding that our students understand visual competence in terms of creating issues is that becoming a skill students really must have in the 21st century yes okay in we uh, uh, for this uh, level we are I'm teaching the foundation, so we are in charge to uh, show them what is the meaning of composition based on the design element. As they embark to the second year, third year, they are more critical in generating their ideas and concept for their own artwork. Hello. <laughs> and, and we kind of rushed you there, at the end. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. It's okay. But uh, if you were to summarize your most important finding yes. that you didn't anticipate finding, uh -huh. that would be? Oh, okay. Um, well, what I ante anticipate for my students is like when they 
produce their work, uh, the the way they produce, uh, they they present their work. Okay, they they tend to just show the work. They don't argue with us whether what they are doing or what is their reason behind their pictures. We want them to communicate with us, so we we have that crit uh, we have that crit session, which is more like debating about their work. So the, when they present, they are able to talk and express themselves during that critic section. I love it. That that's a pretty good, pretty good ending. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. Yes. I am to announce because we're worried I'm not going to do this, but I, I will uh, announce that there was a program that was scheduled yesterday for a uh, workshop where where the fellow couldn't make it, so that's being rescheduled today during the last session on intercultural diffusion by utilizing debate to build a consensus generation. And it sounded interesting enough, I actually went to it, even though it didn't happen yesterday. Uh, and it sounded like an interesting topic. I met the fellow this morning from uh, Africa. He's now at the uh, United Arab Emeritus and it should be a fun program. So that's at 3.45, the last slot, or at uh, 15.45 for the civilized world, I presume. Okay, um, the next topic is on historically uh, is Wiley College, and you may not know where Wiley is, but you know where Texas is, and so I assume that anybody from Texas thinks those are synonymous, right? And everybody's, and it's not Dallas, but it's close. Uh, I've done some research personally on historically, uh, historical black uh, colleges and universities and, and, and early periods of their debating histories in the societies, and I find this really interesting, and Wiley was, if you, the, oh, you're probably gonna talk about the movie, so I better not step on that, uh, Wiley is, intimately involved with your Hollywood notion of what debate might be. So we are, we are welcoming, uh, see this is terrible, we just met. Um, welcoming Chris Medea, thanks Chris.